Here's just a generic diagram that shows the layers of the face that you should think of when you're approaching a facelift. You know you have the skin, which obviously you can see directly underneath the skin is a layer of fat. This is the superficial layer of subcutaneous fat. Underneath that is the musculoaponeurotic system. We'll get more in depth what that actually means. The deep space underneath that is like a loose aerial or plane where the superficial system can glide and move relative to the deeper structures. It also has some retaining ligaments that we won't get in depth to because that's a whole other discussion. And then the obviously most deep layer is the periosteum, which is also continuous with the deep fascia that's directly on top of the bone, the periosteum. And we'll see that here in this diagram, how the layers of the face are concentrically arranged, meaning that the layers of the face and the forehead through the mid face and then down to the neck are all essentially the similar, but they just have different names. And that is the confusing part. So for example, here, if we were to follow the skin subcutaneous tissue, and here's the temporal parietal fascia, which is the musculoaponeurotic layer in the temporal region, so temporal parietal. And the temporal parietal fascia continues down into the mid face as the SMAS, or superficial musculoaponeurotic system. This continues down all the way down to the platysma, where it's basically the platysma and its respective fascia. Now let's get a little bit more in depth into this with a, a different view. So this is a view that if you're looking straight onto somebody and then it is cut this way, so it's a, a coronal cut. And here's the ear. I left out the skin and subcutaneous fat because that's something we're, that's consistent. We know about that, uh, just to simplify the diagram. So the first thing we see is that this is the superficial fascia of the face. So the superficial fascia of the face is sometimes also directly referred to as the superficial musculoaponeurotic system. Basically, this is the superficial layer of the fascia of the face, and it, it will run here, and then when it gets to a facial mimetic muscle, so orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, or zygomaticus major or minor, whatever muscle, whatever mimetic muscle you want to talk about, it'll split into a superficial layer and a deep layer. Whatever muscle you want to talk about, it will split into a superficial and a deep layer and to invest that facial mimetic muscle. And then it will rejoin itself and then continue before it hits another muscle and continues throughout the face. So the superficial fascial layer is basically starting in the neck as the platysma and its respective fascia. And if you go more superior or cephalad, it becomes or it is now named the superficial muscular aponeurotic system in the mid face. And then when you get up to the temporal region, this is now called the superficial temporal fascia. This is also sometimes called the temporal parietal fascia, which kind of contributes to some of the confusion when you're trying to learn this. So again, this is that SMAS or superficial facial fascia layer that is always going to be covering the branches of the facial nerve. The facial nerve will always be deep to the superficial temporal fascia, the superficial musculoaponeurotic system in the mid face, and to the platysma and its respective fascia in the neck when you're talking about the cervical branch. So again, the frontal branch will be deep to the TP fascia or superficial temporal fascia, temporal parietal fascia, whatever you want to call it, the, uh, the zygomatic and buccal branches will be deep to the SMAS in the mid face. and also the marginal mandibular and cervical branch will be deep to the platysma and its fascia as it transitions from platysma to SMAS in the mid face and lower mid face. So deep to that, he could, you can see here's our frontal branch, right? And we'll come back to the course of the facial nerve after we get through the different layers. So here's the tricky part. The, so here's the tricky part, where the, the periosteum of the forehead comes down, oh, sorry, and let's not forget that the superficial temporal fascia in the temporal region is also called the TP fascia. And the 
superficial temporal fascia is named so in the temporal region, but over the forehead and the rest of the scalp, this layer of fascia is called the galea aponeurotica, which is basically the fascia of the frontalis or occipital frontalis muscle. So you can see this is basically just the muscles, the facial mimetic muscles, including the frontalis and then the platysma. This is the superficial fascial system. If you're going deep to that, you run into a, a very small superficial fat pad. Sometimes people just call this a loose areole or plane that's going to be covering the superficial layer of the deep temporal fascia. Now this is the confusing part where people get confused, and so did I. So the periosteum of the cranium is going to extend down inferiorly. And when you get into the temporal region, this periosteum is now going to be called the deep temporal fascia. Now it's important to note that the, this deep fascial system, when it goes over bony prominence, is continuous with the periosteum. That's a key point. So the periosteum is now called the deep temporal fascia in the temporal area. Remember, we had the superficial temporal fascia and now we have a deep temporal fascia. What's confusing is that sometimes people call this the temporalis fascia because this deep temporal fascia is literally right on top of the temporalis muscle because it is its respective fascia. So the deep temporal fascia continues down and it splits into a superficial layer and a deep layer. It's named that because the superficial layer inserts on the, and it is continuous with the periosteum on the superficial part of the zygomatic arch. And the deep layer of the deep temporal fascia is continuous with the periosteum on the deep surface of the zygomatic arch. Makes sense, right? In between the superficial and deep layer, there's a middle temporal fat pad. So again, we had a superficial temporal fat pad and then a middle temporal fat pad sandwiched in between the superficial and deep layers of the deep temporal fascia. Coming down, if you see that the deep temporal fascia, the superficial leaf coming down is continuous with the parotidal masseteric. This is just the deep fascia of the face in the mid face. As it extends down, it eventually becomes the deep cervical fascia. So the deep cervical fascia is also the parotidal masseteric fascia and the superficial leaflet of the deep temporal fascia and these fuse together, become the deep temporal fascia before eventually become the periosteum. So hopefully we're all clear so far. You have a superficial layer of fascia composed of the galea aponeurotica, the superficial temporal fascia, the superficial muscular aponeurotic system, which is also continuous with the platysma and its fascia. And then the deeper layer is continuous with the periosteum at bony prominences, is the deep temporal fascia, splitting into a superficial and deep layer, which are continuous with the periosteum, the zygomatic arch, and the superficial leaflet is continuous with the parotidal masseteric fascia in the mid-face and lower mid-face. Now it's important to note that here's the, the facial nerve, right? It's coming out, this is the frontal, uh, the frontal branch is the most important part that we always talk about in facelift. Initially, it is deep and covered by the parotidal masseteric fascia, and as it comes across Across the zygomatic arch, this is always the area of discussion that is most susceptible to injury because that's where you're going to be working. And it's actually, it's, in fact, a study, recent studies have shown that one to two, uh, sometimes even three centimeters above the zygomatic arch, this frontal branch is still protected by this superficial fat pad. So depending on which study you read and what diagram you, you look at, this frontal branch may even show itself coming out deep and still protected by the superficial layer of the deep temporal fascia and then pierces through that and pierces through the superficial fat pad or that loose areola or plane that you look for in your dissection. That's why when you're doing uh, any approach to the zygomatic arch, you're gonna be in a plane that you wanna be well deep. You wanna stay on the temporalis muscle deep to the deep layer of the deep temporal fascia because that gives you direct access to the zygomatic arch staying very far away from the frontal branch. So again, you can see that this deep temporal fascia, sometimes called the temporalis fascia, is right on top of the temporalis muscle. That's an important point. Some other important concepts to understand are what is the actual course of the frontal branch and that follows Pitangi's line, which is 0.5 centimeters 
below the tragus to align 1.5 centimeters above the lateral brow, you should expect the course of the frontal branch of the facial nerve to be along that route. So hopefully this was a clarifying video to help understand the different layers of the face when it comes to radiectomy or facelifts.